Uh, good evening. Tonight is uh, Monday, August 7th. Um, Mr. Fine is running a few minutes late, but he will be strolling in shortly. It is 6.30 p.m. I'm going to open the meeting uh, with the chairman's statement. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of the proceedings produced of the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will and are being recorded. Gil, are you recording at all? No, I am no. not. Okay, perfect. I would like to first get rid of, um, on our agenda, we actually have signed payroll, uh, which we should, be should have been deleted. We no longer are signing payroll. That is now being taken care of by inspectional services. So I'm going to go right on to approving minutes of the meeting. We still have a minutes of the meeting for June 19th. Gary Fine was not present. Both myself and Mrs. McSweeney were here. And I'd like to make a motion to accept those minutes as written. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I'm going to wait for the July... 17th. We do have a correspondence that was put in um, our packets, which is basically a letter from the new, newly created Department of Municipal Inspections. We are waiting for Ed Thorne to come in and go over that with us. Um, other than that, while I'm waiting, Lisa, Yes, ma'am. Why don't we um, oh, I thought she was I'm sorry. pop okay. down I'm sorry. to okay. outbreaks? This uh, future ones, is it all right for that one? Uh, I, don't, I don't know for right now, but I don't know if this I'm is I'm sorry. Nice. Why don't Patty we hold one take, second? Take I'm sorry. I I wasn't. Her, her name's not on it for some reason. Hold, I'll what? just take that page. Oh. Yeah, yeah you can just put it on okay. that page. Yeah. Perfect. Um, uh, septic outbreaks remain the same. Um, Pembroke Hospital, I forwarded an email to the board which is a representation of the updates I've been receiving from the engineering program overseeing that. I'm sure you all just perused it. There's a lot of you know very technical material in there, but the, the reason I forwarded that on is just to show the board the kind of correspondence I'm receiving as they move forward with their licensure for their wastewater treatment facility with the state. Okay. Um, the field house is currently before the planning board. I believe we have a joint meeting or a request uh, to discuss the field house with the planning board on August 14th. The last is um, the facility off of Riverside Drive, which is also being monitored, and the water is actually being um, tested for alkalinity and some other things by a wastewater treatment management company to determine the source of that problem so that the remediation they put forward will actually work. In other words, when you're dealing with a restaurant such as a Dunkin' Donuts that's putting a lot of dairy, flour, and other things down the drain, your standard, oh, just replace the septic system, has been proven over the years not to work. They need specialized treatment to neutralize the water so that the wastewater can be adapted by the ground without causing premature failure. Um, so they continue to do that. They sent over some correspondence last week as well that they continue to water, monitor the pH levels and some other aspects of the wastewater to develop a wastewater treatment program for them. Okay. So that takes care of our three larger facilities. So they're basically all in a trying to address issues um, status and moving forward. Okay. And, that, and the restaurant um, or food facility is the Oak Street. Um, it's actually Riverside Drive. It's on the other side. Riverside. Other side. Okay, that's right. Oak Street is the field house. Yeah, field house. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Um, any private home violations update? No, for once. <laughs> Where's my fake? Oh, do I have real wood? No, I don't know why there's real wood in this office. So, no, at this time, all of our currently open home sanitary issues are all addressed. Um, Oldham Street has not had their septic replaced yet, but is moving forward with that. So right now we do not, again, knock on all the fake wood I can find, do not have any outstanding violations at this time. They have all been addressed They've and all been addressed. resolved? Uh, other than the, the septic system at Oldham Street, yes. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Um, hi, Mr. Fine. Good evening. Come on in. We got you right oh. here. Thank you, honey. That's page two, right? You said it. Yeah. I think I gave you both of them. They gave them. Yeah, that's all. The comedy. Oh. 
I'll have to do it. This is the, uh... I have guys in the back of my head. It's very good. I'm going to put the pocket right up there. Um, oh, okay. To replace that. Okay. That one's yours. And then let me sign this one for yeah. you. It's not good, Gary. Mm, thank you. All right, so Lisa, let's hold off on to your new activity. We're ready for Ed whenever. Yeah, new activity is going to be very exciting. So. Okay. Gary, um, one outstanding, uh, we want to, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting as of July 17th, which was the last meeting that you and I were present for, and most of it was in regards yep. to. I, okay. Yep. Did, are you I, making a motion? I am a, yes, I am. I will second that motion. I read the minutes. Okay. So. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. She just has to fix this back page, Gary, because, I don't know, she wasn't thinking about it. Yet. Yeah. Stephen. I apologize for my weakness. No, no problem. Um, here's the second page, actually, on this one. She fix it for us. So if you wouldn't mind signing that. The other pen. A little pile. I see. I collect I will lots copy of that. trash. Are we signing the minutes now? Is this? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Sheila, can okay. I just ask a question? Yes. All the other. Why wouldn't we sign the minutes? All the we other meetings, the wasn't it just my we signature always sign the on them? Minutes, the meeting minutes. Uh, I don't know. Because I, I usually just copy them over. Yeah. So I, I put it on there, but I thought it was just yours. Yeah, it usually is just okay. mine. Um, but. Because then why? No, oh, because. They all vote on it. Whoever was their votes on it, then mm -hmm. you just the only one that has to sign right. them. Right. Okay. Well, we have double checked that of the yeah, elements. I'll look um, back to the old But we both signed these. Um, Hi, Ed Thorne. Hey. Thank you for coming to our meeting. In everyone's packet, we all know Ed Thorne. Ed is now the charge of the Department of Municipal Inspections, which does now include the day-to-day -day operation of the Board of Health in conjunction with a couple other boards, right? Uh, ZBA, Conservation, and uh, Building Department. Okay. okay. I asked um, Ed, this went into effect as of July 1st, and Ed did draw up a letter for us, but I wanted to make sure that any of the board members, if anyone had any questions, concerns, um, input that they'd like to ask of Ed in regards to how the Department of Municipal Inspections is going to be handled, how does that affect the board as an elected board under with Lisa Cullity reporting? Um. I myself at this point would, um, right now what I think is we're lacking some clarity in things that are happening in the office. Okay. I had a resident come up and see me and ask me why our health agent was driving in a police car. And unbeknownst to me, I, I didn't even know that. Um, <coughs> And then to find out that the janitor, I, mean, I think that that's something that the board should be appraised of when things like that do happen. Um, I'd also um, think it's it's pretty crucial to mark the car, mark mm -hmm. the Board of Health. Um, I agree. And um, I'd like to see that done. I would have liked to have seen that done before it was it was mm -hmm. taken over. Yeah, I had the same thought when, uh, when I saw it. And uh, to be honest with you, I just, forgot about it. So, I mean, it, it's a quick fix mm -hmm. to be able to put the, you know, the seal, you know, and, and the lettering that it, it's a Board of Health vehicle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And how does that process, that process went through, um, I believe there was something that had been, um, they repurpose vehicles with, in departments. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons Lisa came it was a good idea for Lisa to come out of a truck and go into a regular four-wheel um, SUV. SUV. Is yeah, it would start, well, 
her truck was starting to pile up and it, you know and and she tra she uses it more extensively than than what uh, the town hall custodian will mm -hmm. so we'll get more bang for the buck for that particular um, pickup truck that we've had forever and uh, you know uh, the uh, head custodian actually right now the only one we have at town hall uh, because we lost another one to the private sector um, you know, we'll use that in the morning just to haul some things to the recycling center or to um, a dumpster if it's too heavy for him to, mm -hmm. you know, to haul, you know, uh, physically and by hand. So um, it was a, a joint decision made by um, police chief and myself because he, you know, he had that as a, an expendable item and, uh, you know, he was able to... Uh, we were able to repurpose that for uh, for short money, as they say. Okay. So the the and, and I agree with Gail's point about having it labeled. That's yep. that's uh, that would be important. Okay. The labels were ordered for those that don't understand that the gentleman that does this town signage passed away. Yeah. The labels were Mr. ordered. Mr. Litchfield. Correct. And they they sit there, but unfortunately guy. are not released due to billing issues, much so like the town beach signage. So the intention was never to have that vehicle blank by anyone. Um, unfortunately, the, the signs sit at the, the place of business, as do our beach signs waiting to be released. So um, I just want to um, ask a question that had come up for us or for me as a board was the Board of Health now has the ability to focus directly on procedure and policy when these are enacted um, and there's emails that go back and forth how much do you want to be kept in the loop in regards to standardized emails that are sent out or you know when we have a procedural change or a policy change um, what's the chain of command I guess is what I'd like to yeah I mean clarify. just you know if, if the Board of Health decides, like the Conservation Commission will do and, and the ZBA will do, you know, if there's something that they want to have done uh, that would affect the day-to-day -day operations, I think, and, and it, it's in the purview of the Board of Health, all you would do is you would make the decision at a Board of Health meeting and just CC me in a in a memo saying that it's okay so in a memo form sure okay mm -hmm. would be okay perfect because I didn't know if it would be a CC on an email how it would you know if there was going to be a standardized form that would be filled out as a ticket that's, that's going into the proceed you know into sure. the Department of um, Inspectional Services you know so that it can be tracked um, just so that we have a I think I I think for the board it would be beneficial to have an actual form mm -hmm. so we have a date it was requested and then having a date when it is completed um, if we do any type of procedural or policy change. Um, I think that might be a good way to start mm -hmm. tracking it, um, but that was just my thought. Um, I don't know, Gary, if you have any thoughts? In regards well, to the form, here, Connor, or? or anything, um, to, to depend to do with. I'm sorry. I didn't any or anything that you have a question or concern yeah, about I, this municipal inspection. Yeah, thank you. Neither a question or a concern. More of a comment from Mr. Thorne. Um, although this is being done in many communities, so this isn't the first community that's attempting to consolidate some departments. So right, the, the, the bylaw itself was modeled after what Hanover did. Yeah. What I'd like to see, and I'm sure j just like physically, you know, I came in today and there were guys working on the building, so we're working through the kinks of physically. I'd like to see you come back here, you know, uh, in maybe three or four months' time, once things have settled through and you've gotten a hold of uh, a handle, not that you don't now, but mm -hmm. a, more of a, a better handle on how DMI is running, and just come back to the board and, and just give us a little, I don't want to say a presentation, but sure. an overview, and, and we might have a better mm -hmm. sense of what concerns we have. So mm -hmm. I'd just like to invite you to come back. I actually, um, I was requested by a member of the Government Study Committee 
to do that very thing. Because as you know, the Government Study Committee kind of championed this bylaw at the, at the town meeting. And so the member of the advisory committee, who's also a member of Government Study, asked me if I would give them an, an update as well. Thank you. I have one more question. Sure. With the, the Olden Pond situation, how involved is the board going to be um, as far as us kept abreast of what is going on with, with the Olden Pond, with the state, with the DEP? Oh, well, I think Lisa's probably going to mm -hmm. at least give you an update as to what we, yes. we had a conversation with town council mm -hmm. today. Um, you know, regarding the steps we that, that? that we did want to take. Did you get an update today? Yep. No, just so the board knows that it's on the agenda for tonight as an emergency top. This is a, and as the town administrator can inform you, rapidly evolving situation. This is something that literally was dumped on us at approximately noon on Friday, and, and it's been a, a rapidly evolving situation as a plate way. Now, are they going forward? Is DEP going forward with more testing? Or testing was done today by DEP. I was told by a member of DPH, but that, again, will be part of the... And how story. often are they considering, how often are they going to be once doing the testing? Once a week. They will not test more than once a week. And actually, we had a member of the, uh, oh, Kathleen McCarthy, who's a member of the Furnace Pond Dredging Committee, contacted our, uh, the, uh, the firm that did the testing and the treatment. And they're going to come back, I believe, tomorrow and, and test as well. Are we still doing brain tree analytical? No. Brain, brain tree analytical does our bacteria, our pond swimmability. Right. And that, that's the lab. This, this is completely different. This was a sample taken by a state employee to the state lab, I was told. Okay. But we still send up on water out to analytical yeah, and brain GNL, tree. GNL labs, yes. Yes. Okay. Handles that for us. Okay. And that's going to be an in depth emergency item that we're going to add to the yes. agenda and because that's really the buzz in. thing for people yeah. right now they want to know yeah. they got kids yeah, i'm going to be bringing it up to the selectmen as yeah. well and, the, so. and and when lisa got the call um i was actually phoned and it, we agreed shut the pond down until we can further figure out what's going on how this was how the state even came usually an appointment is set up lisa is on site so if there is an issue right. our health agent knows about it all of a sudden there was a report that, you know, there was a problem, shut it down. Um, this is very atypical. I have, I have yeah. never in my 21 years of involvement had the state come in, perform a test, not even inform the town. And, and my fear was, of course, I, I had been in and out. So my first fear was, oh gosh, did they tell someone else and I didn't know. But I then confirmed with, with both um, wetlands and, and the town administrator's office that, that no one in this town had been informed that they even came to town, they ever did anything. Our first notification was the test results five days after the test was taken. Mm -hmm. So they took the test on Monday and you get the test results on Friday. Okay. So we'll get into that further. Okay. Um, anything else for nope. Mr. Thorne while he's here? Okay, I'll All look right. forward to coming back and selectman meeting following a report. Wonderful, thank okay. you very much. Thank Greatly you. appreciated hey, it. Mr. Thorne. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Thank you. Okay, um, I believe... The 655 is here. Yeah, like the 655, it. which is 58 <laughs> furnace yes. lane. And just to bring the board up to speed, if you're not familiar with this parcel, it is a rather small parcel, but what's most interesting about it is it sits in what would be the forked branch, if people are not familiar with Furnace Lane. It actually branches off halfway down the street and goes in two directions. Um, so it's a street that goes like this, and both of them are Furnace Lane. One is numbered low, the other one's numbered high. So this parcel sits between two um, roads in Pembroke, therefore has to accommodate the setbacks on both sides of this wedge of pie. And the home that sat there um, had some pretty severe conditional issues and needed to be taken down and they needed to rebuild, which left, by the time you took out the setbacks for two roadways and the setbacks from the abutter, they were left with a very small triangle to work with, which has led to the, to the problem they face right now. The, the triangle they had to work with required the house to be situated very specifically in the center of the lot to be accommodated. The septic had to be situated quite close to the house in order to, again, accommodate all those setbacks. And what's oh, happened is their secondary egress off the back of the no, house this is not, um, this was is to be a deck to provide egress as required by building code. And unfortunately, that egress 
um, is going to be too close to the septic system and they really don't have anywhere else to go. Do you not have that down here? I'm missing. You probably have a plan right in front of me. Yeah, I have a drawing here as well. I'm missing yes. yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have the other three. Right. Thank you. Hi. 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 I'm How Chris. This is my wife, Kate. Hi, nice Chris. Hi, Kate. Hi. How are and this nice young gentleman. This is my son, Robert. Hi, Robert. Who's going to be on his best behavior, I'm sure. Okay, great, because we have two cameras. Wow. You're on, on TV. You're on TV. <laughs> so, all right, what do we have? Well, it was an oversight, unfortunately, and, and uh, you know, it's one hand doesn't necessarily always know what the other hand is doing. But uh, this is a, by Joe Webby's um, drawing of this, and uh, maybe he wasn't aware that there was going to be a set of sliders here, but he did have a copy of this plan. I'm going to pull this down. So I'm not quite sure where the lack of communication happened. But we have our septic tank now. It's a 1,500-gallon tank, and our our set of patio doors is right here. There was always scheduled to be a small deck coming off the back, and I actually called and tr talked to Tracy. I think it's Tracy. This is yeah, yeah. building yeah. department. Yes. Building department. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at my drawing. You can see this is upstairs. You know, this is the elevation from the rear. There was always a plan to have a small deck here. Mm -hmm. So I actually have called her and I've spoke to her at one point and I was looking to do a little bump out on the, back on this side for a, for a fire a gas fireplace and I spoke to her as well about doing this deck and how close it would come to these, this tank and if it was going to be a problem and she was unaware that it was going to be a problem. I didn't think to consult the Board of Health, I didn't know it was going to be an issue. Are you an engineer? No, oh. I'm not. But I've got an exactly similar situation happening in Marshfield right now with a set of uh, ports that I've got yes. to build right mm -hmm. next to a yeah, septic close. tank. Mm -hmm. And another piece of property. And another piece of property, but this is down in Hummer Rock. And so, I mean, for it's... A for a customer. So, but I'm, no, I'm not an engineer. I'm just, I'm just me. And then, so this is the, this is the, the, the deck area. Here. So where, which, where was the miscommunication? Or just help me understand what was the miscommunication? Well, evidently on my part, I didn't, must not have asked the right question of the right people at the right place and at the right time to, to know that I couldn't do this because I was under the impression that I could do this, put footers here. So my plan was to bring, to put footers out here. This is 10 feet here. My plan was to put footings out at eight foot six inches and then have the deck come out to the edge of the tank, leaving it clear. But if I can't put any footers in between the house and this tank, then I'm not exactly sure how I solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So you're close. saying it's 10 feet from here to here? And no, then 10, ten, ten feet from the edge of the tank to the edge of the okay, foundation. Okay, so this is what I'm right. This is 10 feet. And then approximately that square and this square would be my location for footers. And the footers are, are, are less than, or, or 10 about feet? About 8 feet then. About 8 feet. They're, they're, at, the they're at 5. Right now, I'd, I'd like to have them at about 5 feet. Originally, they were 8 foot 6. Right. But 5 feet, um, it, all we need is a platform so people can walk up and open the door. Mm -hmm. and, and then we could put a patio. I don't want to step, but you and sure. I talked about this. This is also the secondary egress of the house. And yep. as I said, once you take away the two roadway setbacks and the setback to the, to the side lot, even ha had the client known in advance the the shape where that septic sits, we weren't going to have a lot of latitude to move. The only thing that might have been able to be done, but I would expect that the ZBA would have had a problem with, is to try to do a side egress to that house. But again, you'd be encroaching on the property next to it. So mm -hmm. even if we had known, there was always going to have to be a back egress. Every home has to have two egresses. There's always going to be a back egress. And the back is where the septic was. So we didn't have a lot of latitude, no matter... Even if everyone had known everything at the right time, we were still going to run into this tight situation because of the shape of the lot and the setbacks from the roadways. It was going to be unavoidable no matter what we did. And when was the system put in? Just, just this past two week. Weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Okay. So, with it being five feet from the tank, um, you know that you have to hand dig. You can't bring a, a backhoe in there or a scooper. Mm -hmm. um, and any damage that is done <coughs> would be your full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. you got to be really careful. Um, 
digging around there. Um, and that is the only other egress to that. That's the second egress. That's the second. There That's is a garage second. door, but mm -hmm. the man the door for the garage. Count. Garage doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. That does not count yeah. as an egress. Okay. And the original plans you. that you have does show that. You're just wanting to make it bigger than what was on the plans? Well, yeah, that was, that was the idea. I mean, I could... The required you know, setback is 10 feet. When all is said right. and done, if he moves forward with his plan as he's proposing, he's asking for relief from 10 feet down to 5 feet for his footings is what he's looking for. Yes. Footings, plural. How many are we talking two. about? Two. two. Just two. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, would anybody like to ask any questions? Um, or... I would be more than happy to entertain a motion. I'm going to make a motion regarding the property of 58 Furnace Lane that we accept the 10 foot variance and allow the two footers that will be five foot from the septic tank. Do I hear a second? I'm going to abstain. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you second? Yes, she did. Good. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Say good here in the banner. Well, thank you. You won. You're on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, yes. You're all set. I, again, I, it was a total lack of communication. I somehow, and I try to, you know, right. I'm not like try to hide for anything right. to, to, from anybody, and, and I always try to ask the right questions right. to make sure that it doesn't get complicated. And so unfortunately, somehow, sometimes things that. fall through the cracks. But yeah. I do want to reiterate, for your own uh, pocket. And protection. And protection <laughs> is to please make sure that those footings are hand dug. Mm -hmm. You're five feet to that tank. If you damage that tank in any way, shape, or form, I you're know. gonna. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, you very welcome. much. I appreciate you guys taking the time. No worries. Next time I'll know better. Mm. That's okay. I'm glad that we could <laughs> take care of this point. Thank you very much. Good Enjoy. luck. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Good evening. Good job, Tom. Huh? He did awesome. You can come back anytime, buddy. He's saying she will. I hate the ball field. Caitlin Bergen's here. Oh. But I haven't seen Shane. Okay, so she doesn't come on and She's much like, she's after the variances. Yeah, yeah, so, so she's, you know she's okay. Yes. Yeah, but it's not a public, the board is allowed to take that up out of turn if you want that is routine business being revisited it wasn't a scheduled appointment okay it's no, is yeah me neither um is seven are seven o'clock seven is shane and i haven't seen him i have not seen him yet i have seen shane I yet do, i apologize do we know she was coming well we have I was on, at the no, last I, meeting we told her that we were meeting again that you wanted to see some progress on the 6th of august which is or the 7th seventh. Seventh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. We have it under old business. We have it under old business. You forgot my sense of it. Correct. Um, all right, well, right now, I, I, I think while we're waiting for Shane to appear, because I'm not quite sure how long that's going to take, Lisa, can you give us a quick update um, on the Board of Health Office activity? Welcome back. If we get any busier, it will not be fun. <laughs> How's that? But of course, you know that from the real estate market better than anyone sitting here. Um, it, it continues to be that any scrap of land that can be built upon is, and any scrap of land, even with a home that uh, is practically falling down or is falling down, is being um, perked and developed. So we're about as busy as we get. Okay. Usually by now, we should have some sort of lull in activity. All the days I'm here, there is a perk, if not two. When I get back all the way through the end of August, I have exactly one day with no perk on it. Okay. Which, by the end of August, we should be quieting down and we are in here. No. No. Okay. Um, of course, that makes Sheila even busier here because she has to do that much more here by herself. Mm-hmm. All right, real quick, because I still don't see Shane. Uh, manure complaint, Priscilla Drive. Continues to improve. Every time I go by there, it is less visible there is more green and grass and other things and not piles of manure there is no new manure um, I've seen the trailer with manure on it so I know it is being taken out mm -hmm. and we have not heard from the uh, complaint tent I have not complained that's enough
No. So have you been on the property or are you just walking by? No, I do a drive by. I do not invade the homeowner's privacy unless absolutely necessary, as I've continued to see no reason to do so other than routine barn inspection, which was done, which also showed um, that there was no new manure being added anywhere. When do you have, I'm not looking for specifically, can you give me roughly when was the last time you were actually on the property as opposed to? I was on to the property a month ago. I drove by, well, last week, Friday. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any word from DPW in regards to doggy poop bags? No, but I haven't been in this building more than probably 20 minutes at a shot, so okay. fairness to them. All right. I, I know Bob Clark was working on it. I think he talked. He to has people. poop bags, but he doesn't have dispensers. So we're halfway there. We're halfway there. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Can we? Um, what do you want? Well, if we have the bags, I mean, can we yeah, ask DPW about uh, dispensers? Um, and, and what the cost of that would be and see if we can have something, you know, I mean, what's the sense of having the bags if, <coughs> I mean, we don't want to go down there and hand them out, but. How, actually, how long do the dispenses last? What's their, their shelf life for when they're out? Well, they, I would the, think they'd be similar to the signs. I mean, the ones we had were nice powder-coated powder metal yeah. and plastic things. The problem is some um, people are hitting them and pulling them out of the ground and taking them. Why, I can't imagine. It depends on how but two of them have, are, have been completely removed. Uh, okay. That's because okay. I, I remember ordering them, and I knew that they were a, a really nice stock, nice, yeah. nice they're, material. They're the plastic, the outdoor heavy-duty plastic. I mean, if you saw them in place, which I have, mm -hmm. they were very nice and very strong. Do we have some left? or Not to my knowledge. I can try and confirm with Jean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why anyone would take such a thing is beyond me, but why do people take street signs? Why do people do a lot of the things that they do? I don't know. Right. So at this junction, no dispensers have been ordered. Is that None it? have been ordered at this time. I do not know if there are additional dispensers stockpiled somewhere within the DPW warehouses. Yeah, there may just be somebody taking a look um, or checking it out. Okay. Um, may you get to see Shane's face? No. You want to you text him, see if he forgot? No, Bill has my phone. He had to take it in to get serviced. It was acting funny. Um, I'm going to jump over the local regulation upgrades for the topic of animal fees for right now. Um, plastic bag initiative, um, any update, Gary? Do we have any uh, homeowners or people within town who have reached out, would like to talk about it? Um, I've gotten a couple of feels about some folks that are interested in being on the board. I mentioned to the board several weeks ago I'd like to get something together for the fall, not in the summer season. And before I put the committee together, or before we put the committee together, I need to spend some time with our health agent who's been very busy. And uh, I want to talk to some of the selectmen so we make sure okay. that this, this is done correctly prior to just forming the board. So. All right. Well, how about if we take this line item and um, put it through to mid-October? I think it can do a little sooner, but... Okay. Well, why don't we, we earmark it that, and then we can get it off of the agenda, and perfect. as you're, you know... Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Shall you got that? Mid-September. Why don't we go ahead? Yeah, why don't you say um, end of September? And then Lisa, we'll have that as you, an item I to know you're revisit. Going away I'm, again. I'm back the 22nd, and I'm, that's it. Um, when are you leaving? I am leaving on the 10th. Okay. And I just shot an email to Jean to ask about um, dog and poop dispensers. To, You're here to the 10th. Okay. <coughs> so you work at two Wednesday? Okay. So that yes. is, Gary, that way we get that off and sure. let Keep you Keep in do mind I have thing. River Marsh to respond to on Wednesday, so, but yeah, we'll get to that. Good. Okay. Um, we still have to wait for Joe Webby. He has a 7.15. Um, Wampatuck, Gary Collins, um, George Collins is coming in? Yes. yes. He confirmed today. Okay. Um, if the board wants to start taking a look at 67, the 
variance is a pretty standard one. That would probably. It's right on the agenda. Yep. Is that the only variance? Just from four to three. I'm sorry, that is the only table. variance, yes. Okay, thank you. No, is, he, is Shane coming in? He's supposed to be. He's supposed to be, but um, we haven't seen Did him you just as look up of at yet. The clock that's not there. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm using my phone. It's seven o five, which is different than that one. I have seven o seven on the computer, yeah. so we're close enough. Um, all right. So okay, this so is a three bedroom, and we've got a. What do we got on this one, Lisa? What, the McGowan's plan? Yeah, it's reduction in the one. separation between what the bottom of What you have is the one side of, of Edgewater Drive. Obviously, Edgewater used to back up to a large pond before a dam blew out. Um, Edgewater is an area that has a lot of finer material. It was an social outlaw zone, which is what created the quasi-pond that was there before the dam enhanced that pond and made it higher. Those materials um, make for an artificially high water table demarcation. Um, it, it creates very high modeling. The state says whether or not it's water, you have to count it as water because you have indications of water sitting there. So this area has combined with a class two or a slower perk rate than we standardly see in Pembroke, which is why the groundwater setback is only four feet. In other words, when the water moves through the dirt slower, you're allowed to be closer to the water table. So uh, class two material would require a four foot separation from water table. Mr. Malone is asking for a variance down to three foot. The purpose for that is Edgewater is extremely low to begin with. Um, obviously when you're doing a pumped and raised mound system, you want to keep that as low as possible. You don't want to be any more high or any more expensive than you absolutely have to be. You also don't want to be any more unsightly than you have to be. Um, so that's why the request for that reduction in one foot. So they're putting in a 15-gallon and a 1,000? 1,500-gallon uh, septic yep. tank and a 1,000-gallon pump chamber, which is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. And the septic was moved over here to the side yard. That's where we found the best material. Very beautiful house, and they're they're looking to sell it. So. Okay. And, and it's has a, lots of beautiful houses. Um, the older side, you know, had a lot of splits. This one's more of a contemporary. It really is a house that stands out if you were to drive by it. Um, beautifully landscaped as well. Okay, so it's a three bedroom. Is he putting is a deed restriction on this because of the not required for eight two bedrooms and under? It's required for three bedrooms. It's not required. It will be restricted um, by the fact that it was designed for three bedrooms. So. Three. Okay. And if it pleases the board, I'm just going to let you know that Mr. Webby is here when you're done with this case. Okay. Does anybody have any further questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. um, and I will entertain a motion. I will second. Well, I'm, gonna end, I'm not making oh, I'm the sorry. motion. That's okay. I'm not making the motion. I'll make a motion on 67 Edgewater to accept the variance on the high water table from 4 feet to 3 feet as proposed by Shane McGloom. Do I hear a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See, she got confused too in the motion, so maybe it's... Carrie, I've been confused for yeah. the past month. <laughs> Okay, 67, there we go. Can you get this for Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Come on up. How are you, hey, Mr. Webby? Good evening. How are you guys doing? Wonderful doing? yourself. Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. New digs, huh? I like them. Yeah, you don't have to go more up room? the stairs anymore. Oh. Yeah. Sheila, I would like to request a little table here. Just so I can put the files. I'll build one. Thank you. <laughs> I, can give you I, can I love give you, her. I really you, love her. I can give you a chair. <laughs> no. <laughs> she got yeah, spunk. Yeah, actually, I could take a chair. I didn't have anywhere to put at this end I, my space. We, we will figure out the new space. We're also thinking a different shaped table might actually be helpful. Wait, wait, oh, yeah. look at muscles. Uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Okay, so you have a plan, so I don't have to take out this one and nope. same one. Yes, this is a septic upgrade at 216 Birch Street. 
and currently there's a, uh, a system that's in still good working order, a leaching field um, to the side of the house, but the people would like to put in a, gar a garage on the side of the house. Uh, so there's no proposed uh, increase in flow here, but what we'd like to do is literally just, well, it's going to get ripped up, but basically build a new septic system about 30 feet behind the house. Uh, the soils are good, it's the same soils. Use the existing tank and pump chamber, and instead of pumping it to here, we're just going to pump it to here. And what we would like to do, again, to ask for that one foot reduction, that we have good sands, uh, we're asking for a one foot reduction from five feet to four feet, just to keep this down a little bit in the backyard. Oh, height wise? Height wise, yes. Mm -hmm. If you left it here, it would cause you all kinds of problems. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Issue with the garage. People would, they want yeah, a garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're willing to just take that, do mm -hmm. away with it. They, they, they feel that they can, or the, uh, the installer feels that he can mine some of the clean sand from this and put it here. Mm -hmm. But basically, this is going right back to the. Uh, and the this old is ground. really good soil in here, anyways. Yes, it is, yeah. Okay, and you've got the membrane, the barrier, mm -hmm. pump chamber. Yes. So nice pretty. and clean. Yeah, yeah these, these tanks are the same that were put in back in, I think, 2002-ish time frame. And, mm -hmm. yeah, they're in good working order. And no increase in flow, just basically. Just a reduction, just yeah. to keep it more. Down right in the back, down, yeah. down a little right. bit more. Okay. okay. Uh, do I hear any more questions, or I will entertain a... Motion. I'd like to make a motion okay. for 216 Birch Springs variance request from to allow four feet groundwater separation instead of five. Is there a second? I'll second that motion made by Ms. McSweeney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I am so off my Joe, game tonight. <laughs> Thank you it's very much. It's Bye, the new Joe. digs. <laughs> the, the air isn't as good yes, down here. Yes, welcome to our new abode. Um, I just am I'm not on my game. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> my paper well, works. We're and we're down to one window. Okay, so we're waiting on um, Collins Engineering. Um, yeah, Collins would be in it. Okay. That one gives you lots to look at. Yeah, I'm not. I'm already really. Yeah. Have you gone wow. through the whole thing except for this the booster? Well, yeah. Well, um, I still have the local regulation oh. um, raising the animal license fees. No fee for one to ten nine chickens? Question mark. Max fee of twenty five. Um. That's been on the agenda for several meetings now. Can I, Madam Chair, um, I'm con a little confused about this. Wouldn't this be something that follows under the director of the municipal licenses? Um, I don't believe um, we the, set you, the policy and procedure. I mean, here's the thing. If the board wants to make a recommendation, I'm confident that the director's going to accept any recommendation the board right. makes unless they have a really substantial re like Like if you said it was going to be $1,000, I think, yeah, someone's going to say that's kind of crazy. The impression I was given, and if I'm wrong, I'll stand corrected, was the intention was never to disrupt any of the board's activities, merely to streamline and compel office staff to share a office b office work and load to provide a more seamless you know service to the public i don't think any policy or procedure was intended to be altered or changed if the board certainly didn't want to now there's another whole approach you could take to this perhaps the board for lack of a better term and i'm not trying to say that animal fees are not important but doesn't want to be bogged down in this minutia and wants to turn it over to the director of municipal services to oversight and set that policy i'm pretty confident he would take on that work if the board was not interested in it or i shouldn't say not interested in it but quite frankly when you look at our agenda has other things to worry about would be more appropriate 
Mm -hmm. and, and the one concern that I have over it is, you know, you get to that tenth chicken. But we obviously have a problem. Yeah, there, there's we, obviously we, we, people playing playing the the chicken. Right. How many chicken game? There's no doubt about that. The other thing the board needs to consider, and again, maybe they want to turn that over to the director of municipal services, is what to do with people with unlicensed animals. We just had to come up with a horse farm today um, that is unlicensed, and penalties and enforcement of that. Certainly, you could say that falls under day to day. We already have enforcement action written into our bylaws of, of fines and what those fines are and who can levy them and everything else. But maybe that's something the board. Well, wants this to is discuss. this is my point where this ties together because the Definitely. inspections, yep. okay, and you just said somebody could come Absolutely. in and say they have five chickens, but they really have 30. Right. So we're not going to know, and right. this follows under the inspection upstairs. Mm -hmm. no, we're not going correct. to know. So. I, to me, I I, um, I I don't understand our role in this, where we put together this um, this unit to be able to take care of these things. That this this isn't. We don't have anything else to do with this. Then may I ask you? Outside I, of because you, when you're right, and I hear you clearly. Do the other board members feel that way? Because I mean, I can bring this back to, to the director of municipal services. And come up with a response, and if that suits the board, then the board can say that they're they're not they're not interested in it. No, I, I don't agree. Okay. I, I I think it falls under you know, and I think of policy and procedures. I think this feels like a board of health issue to me. But that's. In my opinion, is I would like to keep it still under the umbrella of this board because even though the fees and licensing is done. We are the ones who are notified in regards to any complaint. We also need to be advised if she, our health agent, goes out to a site and sees that there could be some type of horrific situation that may require quarantine, we as a board are going to be responsible. Now, it was my understanding that the health agent was to report directly to the town administrator. So, are, is she going to be reporting to both of us, or is it just going to be the town administrator? And then, um, like we were speaking before, as far as yeah. informational um, things that could need to come to the board mm -hmm. that are being filtered up there, um, that I don't have a lot of clarity on yet. And yes, this is brand new, yeah. everything's brand new. Mm -hmm. So, I kind of like to think about that a little bit more. Because it's like a shakedown cruise. Well, go we'll along a little bit. Exactly. I, I agree with Gail. This is something that you don't have shaking. It's about. a brand new horse until we ride it a little bit or a brand new car. We're not going to know how it drives. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, some of this is not 100% clear to me either. Right. But yeah. until but until such time as we can make it clear, I think that it's our responsibility to look at the animal fees. We have a already a chicken situation in front of us and it's clarifying you know the one to nine I think the wording needs to be on the on the bylaw on the procedure policy that the wording needs to be made a little bit more clear Mr. Fine also wanted the last time that we met was to look at all of the livestock categories because we know that we have all different kinds yes. of species. Um, so, what would the board like us to do with this topic? It's on our agenda, it keeps coming on our agenda. We actually have. Um, I t again, to me, if. The licensing is being done upstairs, um, and the inspections are being reported um, to the administrator's office. How would we be able to set um, a new rate without any information on how much it's costing for the inspections or um, to cover the cost of the livestock fees, of the livestock inspections? It, 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 it to it's me this is $25 a household maximum max fee of $25 a household mm -hmm. but how do we know um, 
what fees are needed for licensing if we're in a deficit or um, on paying somebody to do the licensing mm -hmm. or to do the inspections. How do we know these figures? If we're going to vote on um, raising a fee without knowing how much <coughs> is needed for uh, this particular service to be completed. Well, no, it's a valid point. You can look at this as it's a policy of our livestock policy of how the town is going to handle it. And if you if you look at it surely from a policy point of view, it resides right here with the Board of Health, mm -hmm. as the bylaw says. If you look at it from a budgetary, very much to what Gail's saying, if you look at it purely from a budgetary and the purpose of fee is to cover the budget of enforcement and such what, she's absolutely correct. And can I work backwards to that number for this board? Yes. But as Gail pointed out, our salary, our uh, budget, for lack of a better term, there isn't going to be a Board of Health Ed budget anymore. I would suspect in the next round of cycling, the Division of Municipal Inspections, DMI, is going to have one umbrella budget that's going to encompass all of our offices. So to your point, you're 100% correct. You're setting a number at a target that you don't even know. But uh, with all due respect, Madam Chair is also right, too. It is still a policy situation. The livestock policies and procedures were written by the Board of Health. I, I see both points very clearly, and I wish I could say, oh, no, this one's absolutely right, and that one's absolutely wrong, but you can't. Um, and, and as much as I agree with Madam Chair that's been on the agenda quite some time, this could be, because of municipal services, something else that might have to you know, get more information on before you know, you're comfortable well, with Well, I'd it. also like to make a, a, a point of clarity um, in regards to um, you reporting to directional inspectional services on a day-to-day -day basis, but you still report to this It is still my board. obligation to inform this board of what is going on in the town as far as it affects public health. Yes, that is correct. It is still my job to, to keep clarify this board, that. board informed, and at no time do I consider it not my obligation to inform this board. If for some reason the director of municipal services wasn't here or went somewhere else or for whatever reason didn't exist, that would not affect my obligation to keep this board informed of what's going on, which I, I'd like to think I've done and I will continue to do. Right. And, and, and um, I think what I will do, I, I am going to send um, Ed um, an email thanking him and also reiterating and reminding him that I think that we need some kind of a uh, a form. I really want a tracking system done on what this board does, but moving forward, any sitting chairperson of this board of health will always have direct contact with the director of inspectional services. The I see it as they have to work hand in hand. That the chairperson has to know what is going on up there, down here, because otherwise it's just not going to work. So this, pa Go ahead. this particular topic, which has, has been on the agenda for some time, not an excessive amount, but it has been out there for some time, uh, my recollection is that at, at no point in time that we have discussed this topic has anyone on the board or a health agent suggested or even raised the issue that perhaps this should not be under the Board of Health. We've been discussing this topic mm -hmm. as a board to raise the fees. I mean, I'm, I, and I'm not criticizing you. Gary, we just changed Article, Article 11. Just you changed know what? I'm that. still speaking. Hold on a moment. I'm very well we, aware. Let him speak, please. So I'm not criticizing you for bringing it up, but my point is we should be looking at whether we're going to leave the fees as they are or raise the fees. I think it's a little late in the game to be saying, and I could see your point where it could be under inspectional services, but we've never raised that issue. We've, this has been, in a, the board has reconsolidated since July 1st, so mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see this not being under our board. Whether we raise the fees or not is another matter. But, Correct. But, so you don't think that the budget should have anything to do with no, I, with the, the, the fact that we're going to um, arbitrarily just raise a fee and vote well, on it? Well, I don't. Well, I, first I of think, all, I don't, I don't think I, it's arbit. I don't think it's arbitrarily, and also all the fees that are in all of town hall, 
I don't believe, and I might be mistaken, that they are not revenue generating fees or designed to 100% a lot of the, the board cost of health was. So okay, no. um, I'm thinking that if this is this is my thought, um, no matter what, I'm going to abstain from anything going forward with that. So that that will be up to the okay. two of you. Okay. Okay. May I ask just fees or the policies in livestock management? No, the fees. I, I mean, no, no. I'm just asking for clarity. So yeah, just it, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense yeah. unless you evaluate yeah. something. No, no. It, I, I wanted you to know? know so that as I talk to Ed, that's part of my job. I'm in this building every day. I wanted to understand what I, I want to try to solve this. And of course, if I don't know. And how is this? Yeah. A, one more question, if you yeah. could put with this with yeah. Mr. Thorne, could you please ask him how this is going to run with the food licensing? Mm -hmm. um, not only the livestock, what else do we have with septic licensing and all of that? It would, it would tie into all the fee structure. Okay. The fee structure down the line, it, based on your concern, your concern being cost versus benefit, cost versus um, overlay to cover. It would run the whole full full spectrum of and where this and board is not yeah. privy to the budget of yeah. that. That's that's right. my biggest question. No, I, I because I can't. What you're saying. And actually, the funny thing is, this office has never had a line item that says this mm -hmm. office has brought in 100 percent. Like we've never we do a turnover every week. But Sheila, forgive me if I'm wrong, because obviously Carol did this, I didn't. But we never receive anything back from the treasurer's collector's office at the end of a cycle, a quarter, or a fiscal year no, saying your office brought in X amount of dollars. It's a valid point, but what I'm saying is we've never known what our revenue was. The only thing that the Board of Health had of that was the trash and the recycling well, that, account. Well, because it was an enterprise trash. And that was, was, that was the only thing out of the Board of Health. You're correct. Well, Primer, the review engineer, that, that too is an enterprise account. That was a separate. And, and for that matter, so is, so is the, the VNA, the vaccines, have to be an enterprise account by state statute. So you're, you're absolutely right. You, the, we do not have a cost versus outlay for the entire Board of Health. And I think this and is something that needs to be kind of discussed. And, the, you know? and that's, that's a valid point. So it's something down the, so what I was doing is just making some notes down the line of things, areas that need clarification. Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, no I would like to request, I'm actually going to put this on the agenda for our next meeting. Sure. But when you um, do sit down with Ed Thorne, I would like to um, be there in regards to this topic. Absolutely. So what is it that you're putting on the agenda? Putting the question back, I am putting the topic back on the agenda for our next meeting. Is um, the, the only thing I'm going to point out to Madam Chair is obviously I will be gone some of that time and Mr. Thorne is quite busy as well. I would almost put it off not for your next meeting but the meeting following meeting sometime, after. In the beginning, sometime in the beginning of September to, to allow the Prime Minister and I to, to actually make a plan to sit down and have a, a, if you would, productive conversation. Right. September, why don't we put it on September 11th Are meeting? You? Okay. No, is that, what, mine thinks, my tentative date for future meetings is saying September 11th. I hate that date. So what is the question that you're, you're putting on the agenda? If it should be under the Board of Health or under Ed Thorne? Is How the pricing is to be determined, right? Really? Right. I, I want to talk about cost versus benefit to find out in regards to, to get a little bit more information now that inspectional services has been um, constructed. And I want to find out um, if we, you know, my opinion, and I will state it publicly, is I think that we should still have control and involvement in all of the fees, regardless of whether they deal with septic animals or any other fee structure. Um, but I'd like to be able to now talk to the director and then maybe even have him come back and see if we can have it discussed. We have a chicken problem. Um, we were going to look at all animal livestock. I think the only thing that we were going to do was one to nine wasn't going to be free. And I think that was a part of our first or last or middle discussion. Um, the problem is when that tenth chicken rolls around, then it's 50 cents. Well, it's not. Um, you got to pay for ten chickens. So that was where this was going to go, but I'm going to talk about chickens um, with Lisa and Mr. Ed Thorne. I'm sorry, I'm back on with I'm the chicken. I'm going to get away from the fowl. It's all about chickens and peacocks. It's just all yep. fowl. 
Yep, and and you know we got peacocks and and uh, we got all kinds of. Animals. And poor Mr. Collins is wondering why he's right. even here. Yeah, he's not here to talk so, about So um, we're gonna give. I'm gonna. I would like to allow us to look at this, but I would like to be a part of the meeting with Lisa <coughs> and Mr. Thorne, and we'll come I will back set to this up that, on the. That accommodates everybody. So Eleven. We can, thank uh, you. We can we can get to the bottom of it, so to speak. Thank you. We'll I will set something up that, that accommodates everybody so that we can, uh, we, can, we can get to the bottom of it, so to speak. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, hi. Come on up, Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins, where's my last folder? Oh, I don't even think I have one. Oh, the whole thing at the board. Do I have a folder? Do you have one? I said we will get Get that one's done. <coughs> okay, one. Sit down for this one. One seventy-seven Wampatuck Street. What's up? Good evening. Uh, for the record, George Collins from Collins Civil Engineering Group out of West Bridgewater. Um, uh, representing Lisa McLaughlin, uh, the owner of one seventy-seven Wampatuck Street. Uh, this project is very similar to. Last time I was with you, uh, for 51 Adams Ave, um, we have a, a relatively small lot that's on Oldham Pond. Um, Oldham Pond is to the west, and Wapatuck Street is to the east. Um, we're doing a septic upgrade, existing three bedroom home to remain three bedrooms. And basically, we have the system tucked way up um, by the street. To uh, maximize the distance to uh, between the uh, pond and um, the septic system, the four local upgrade approvals that we're requesting um, uh, is a reduction for, for the uh, let's see here, from uh, the distance between a soil absorption system. Um, and uh, a foundation wall. And what it is is um, the, actually, yeah, I show it here. There's a, there's a light gray line. The, my customer may be putting in a garage someday. So I figured instead of um, coming back to you with a request, um, I figured we'd kind of roll it into this. In the event that she builds the garage, we'll already have board of health approval. So basically, um, we're requesting a, a setback reduction from 20 feet to 10 feet to a garage foundation. Um, it's really see it, but this is uh, this is this the ten. It's the ten block coming up. Yes, it's this, uh, it's a little so, yeah little. with a little star in the ten. Um, yes. So um, so again, uh, and we are providing a liner between the future garage that may or may not be built and. Um, soil absorption system, but we're going to put in the liner, that way if she puts in the garage we don't have to take anything apart. We've also put in a, um, a, set, a leaching facility that will handle H20 loading so we can handle vehicle traffic. So it's basically set up so she can build the garage. And where's, I, the, can I, where's the entrance? How are you going to enter the garage? It would be right off the street right here. And again, this is Right off the street, in between the the, the yeah. tank and the aging. Yes, yeah, so it'd be right right over that tank. Again, we have H20 tanks and um, an H20 leaching field, which is uh, set up for heavy duty loading. So if we, she does build the garage, we're ready to. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to take anything apart. Um, we just build the garage. So I figured rather than coming back to you in six months or a year. Uh, we would just try to nip this in the bed in the bud uh, now. Um, I'm gonna drive over the tanks, even though they're really high grade. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Then I'm also requesting a local upgrade approval for setback from a, a septic tank um, and, um, to the um, foundation. Um, we're putting the septic tank right here, and we're only going to be two feet off the existing foundation. 
Um, and we, we were kind of forced to go that direction because to, to get enough length in the leaching field and to maximize the distance away from the pond, we basically put the uh, tank uh, right up against the, very close to the uh, foundation. Um, so it's 10 feet to 2 feet. Yeah, right here. Yeah. And then we're um, requesting a, a setback reduction uh, from a tributary to a surface water supply uh, reduction from 200 feet to 62 feet. And then we're requesting um, a setback reduction uh, for a septic tank, a pump chamber a reduction from 200 feet to 75 feet. And uh, similar to the uh, 51 Adams Ave project, uh, you know, I'm proposing a two compartment tank, um, you know, which does provide um, some secondary treatment um, and it, uh, it, rather than a standard tank. Um, and then the one s substantial difference between this application and the 51 Adams Ave the applications, uh, there are no affected abutters. We had to notify the selectmen and abutters uh, for the 51 Adams Ave project because we were too close to the lot lines. So again, slightly different but very but similar um, project mm -hmm. as the 51 Adams Ave project that was before you um, a couple of months ago. Um, and then uh, another thing, just a point of interest, we are going for conservation on August 28th. I just get the right ones. So just, you know. I, I, I just have to ask a question. Um, if there was no, how, how big is this um, garage? Is it a two-car garage? Yes. Proposed like garage? 24 by 24. Okay. So where it's a, a small lot, Okay. Already. Um, if there was no garage, could this septic system be pushed back? Pushed? No. 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 We, we designed the septic system first and maximized all of our distances mm -hmm. to the resource, which mm -hmm. is the pond. And then we placed the garage on just kind of more of a, a a wish list and try to do some um, advanced planning. Okay. So if the garage room wasn't part of the fact, uh, part of part of the, uh, the equation, the only thing that would be affected would be this. We would eliminate the setback reduction to the garage itself. But right, and that would. I mean, these are. I mean, there's there's, there's a big difference in regards to these minimums and maximums. Number two is really concerning. George, on the, on the first variance, just so I'm clear, in a, pro, a proposed garage, obviously the garage has come up for a topic, so there will be a garage there at some point, but without the garage, you'd still need that variance because you'd be 16 feet instead of the 20. Is that my yes, accurate? Yes, you're correct. Yep, because okay. then we would only be 16 feet off of the... Uh, and then, see, the thing is, if we if we rotated the tanks... So, I'm to, sorry, sir. If, if we rotated the tanks to try to get more distance away from the house, yeah. then we would have grading encroachment um, on, this, uh, on this direction here. By turning the tanks? If we spun the tanks, we would have to make up the room in this direction. And, you know, we, we have grading that's going right up to the... And you've got 16 feet from... Am I reading this right? 16 feet from this sidewalk line? Where the proposed, proposed vent's going to be? Yes, and you, need, and you need 10. So if we rotated everything, slid everything over... That would give you another 6 feet. Then, but we... I, it, there just isn't enough room here. But it, Madam Chair, that side of that septic system, while the side of the septic system, the edge of the field there, would be 16 feet from the lot line, understand every foot you slide that field further towards the abutter to make it 10 feet, now the toe slope of that same system starts to encroach it towards the abutter's lot line. Idelically, when we design, we always want to 
minimize or eliminate any impact to an abutter. So to, to Mr. Collins' statement, yes, he could slide the whole thing down, but what we're doing is sliding that toe slope, that end slope of that septic system to where it's going to be naturally shedding water onto the abutter's property rather than keeping it on this property, which is something we always prefer to do. So it's rather, rather yeah, rather than imposing on the abutter, we're imposing on the applicant. And I have done, I, I have done one foot setbacks with mm -hmm. tanks, and, and it can be done. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's how, how I mean, in a right. perfect world, we'd have a big lot. Right. Have <coughs> exactly, a and then I guess that's what I'm looking at. We don't have a, we don't have a big lot here. So it's sort of like a domino effect. Like you, if, if something gives here, you have to make it up elsewhere. Because mm -hmm. we've just, got, just we've got a dock, a lawn, a deck, a paved driveway. How about a one-car garage? Would that? We we would, we'd still be in the same boat. We would still. I mean, um, you know, and the and the, the garage isn't something that is by a fifty percent chance it will never happen. But it was just one of these things. I spoke to my client. I'm like, rather than going back to the board of health in a year, um, let's bring it to the board now. And then if it you know if it isn't viable, then we know about it now. Mm -hmm rather than uh, rather than going back and forth. Uh, just, just trying to... Mm -hmm. Even without the garage, George, you know, the other three variances, two, three, and four, you're still requesting would that they, they wouldn't change. And actually, variance one would still apply. It would be 16, 16 feet. instead of 10. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we are providing, we are proposing a liner um, between potential future garage and the aging facility, so uh, that will mitigate any... Even by, so the system's in, you'd have to have somebody come in, a concrete truck come in for a pad. Yeah, they would... Uh, what you, it looks like you would be encroaching or going over the field to be able to get in there. They would, they use the concrete chutes. You might have vehicles parking to, you know, set up forms and everything, but you'd have the concrete truck on the road and they would can, uh, convey that by the concrete chutes. They, they wouldn't necessarily have to drive on the system to deliver concrete. Okay. Um, does anybody have any more questions? Um, concerns they'd like to ask. So we're looking for four local upgrade approvals or would anybody like to entertain a motion? And you haven't gone in front of Concord yet? Yes, we're going, we file a notice of intent uh, and we're going before conservation on the 28th, so obviously that would be a no work can proceed without conservation mm -hmm. approval. Hmm. Are you not hearing any type of a motion? Um, does that mean we have no motion? Lisa, would you like to, obviously the board is at a bypass at the moment? I don't know what the board's concern is since no one's articulated it other than to be concerned about the garage, but whether or not the garage was built. I was on site obviously and spoke to both the homeowner as well as was part of the decision making process. Maximum feasible compliance has been achieved by placing the system where it is. Certainly the first argument I would make as the agent is you do not want to in any way, shape, or form move that system anywhere closer to the pond. So regardless of the future use of the house, regardless of any other structures that might be built there, that system is placed to maximize its, its protection of our tributary to a water supply. Um, by law, the homeowner is entitled to a septic system. It's a three-bedroom home. They're entitled to keep that three-bedroom home in use by being granted some form of a septic system at that property. Um, it, it's my opinion this engineer has achieved what we would call maximum feasible compliance with the design put forward today. If the board's major concern is the future garage, then the board can move to grant all the variances but the one that include the garage. 
if the board members have other you know concerns or areas of questions they should bring <coughs> it up um, um, you know that's what should excuse be asked. me Lisa yeah. but um, my uh, my reason for not going forward with this mm -hmm. and why I will not continue forward with this is the setback changed from 10 to 2 feet um, the reduction on the septic tank and pump chamber okay. um, We could we could uh, we could bring it closer to the road and uh, no, notify the selectmen. Two feet as, is just as, as an effect of the butter. To me, two feet is just too shy. I mean, uh, we just gave a variance on five feet, which still we had concerns, but we're talking about a lot more. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot more equipment and heavy use and, and a lot of different things that there's going to be a lot of different dynamics to going on to this um, and two feet to me is just it's just not acceptable George can you follow through with your thought um, that you were just saying uh, to Ms. McSween is a concern about the 10 to 2 which month I have a I have a shared concern but you started to we could we could go we could go from a 10-foot setback to the street to a 5-foot setback and that would bring the 2 to a 7 but then I'd have to notify the, the setback for a selectman as an effect of the butter. Because it, it would be because closer it would be, to would be closer to uh, the right of way than... Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, you know, again, I've spec this scenario out before. Uh, I mean, are, are you... You know, the only other thing that sometimes uh, something we could look at would be we could pr propose a liner between. Is it? Are you worried about leachate getting into the basement? Is it environmental or is it? A I just think I, I think it's a construction. I think it's all of the above. The environmental. I think it's construction. Um, there's a reason why we did the 10 feet setback um, for, and we have we passed that for new construction. Um, I've missed a couple of meetings. Have we passed no, that yet? No. no. On deck footings only, but deck, deck footings, footings are inert. They're not a, a living component. We have in the past had tanks that have been this close to a home before. But remember, the home is what pre-exists. The three-bedroom home is the structure being encroached upon, not the garage. And the home would still be there. And, and to Mr. Collins' point, yes, you can push that tank out towards the street. The the reason where we've always been Larry of doing that as soon as you push a tank towards a right away a right away is there for a reason if Wampatuck Street was ever widened you run the risk of having pushed that tank closer to a traveled roadway I'll give you a perfect example no one ever thought Mattachusett Street was going to get widened either and here we are 40 years later widening it including sidewalks um, so every time you push a tank closer to a right of way you have to be concerned about what is the future of that road uh, right away and what is the damage that could potentially be caused there um, so no, I mean none of it has to be allowed. The, the question is, what are you comfortable with, and and what what is going to be maximum feasible compliance? To Mr. Collins' point, yes, you can throw a liner if you're worried about that. If you're worried about structural damage to the foundation, you know that's that's a valid concern, and I would hope that the equipment operator would not take on a project like that if they didn't feel like they could do it safely. But to leachate, he's he's correct. A rubber membrane, just as we do with the, with a leach field, would be appropriate. And there isn't one here. We are not proposing a barrier between the tank and the foundation, which we certainly could as a condition. Was, as, as an engineer, was there any, any reason other than cost that you, there was no consideration to doing that, to doing what bringing it closer? It, no, it, putting it in the line. I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessary. If, if everything's working properly, um, you know, usually if there's any type of a hydraulic failure or back <coughs> that's in the field, so I wouldn't be concerned about any type of uh, sewage getting into the house, but certainly, uh, certainly as a preventative measure, if the whole leaching field was in failure and the whole system was backed up, I guess you could, you know, so we, we could we could spec out a liner between. Where was the, the existing system? system? The existing system's right smack in the front yard, right here between the uh, between this floor of the house. Yeah. It's just like a. It was just like a single pit. So cesspool. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, there's no other place here. You can't turn it the other way. Yeah, and then um, the other thing that we have is we have the water line we're trying to maintain 10 feet from. So it's just, you know, it's one of those uh, cost-benefit mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to deny somebody a septic system. I'm, I don't like, I'm not very comfortable, but I'm not the expert on the decrease of, of footage on all of the items. Mm -hmm. I do not agree with item number one. I don't think that, I think that if there is a garage that homeowner is going to have to come back. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else that can be done, I would like to make a motion to accept only the local upgrades pertaining to two, three, and four. We would probably have to amend w one to sixteen feet because we would still have six. Uh, we went with the shortest. Um, the garage is going to be the closest. So Madam we, Chair, we would still need a sixteen yes. foot. In line one, you would just simply strike two ten feet proposed garage, and then the, then it would be various requests from Foundation Wall of SAS to reduction from twenty feet to sixteen feet, which is dwelling. So if you just strike two ten feet. Parentheses, proposed yeah, garage, yeah, and if the board reads yeah. through that, then that motion just allows for the variance to the home itself. Is that what you would do? Yes, I, that is what I would like Madam to ask. Chair, can um, I ask you a question? Sure. Is, is just so I understand where your level, the thought process may be going. Are you most concerned about the first variance and less concerned about two, three, and four? And I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot, I'm just curious. No. Um, I am I am not fond of two, three, and four. The problem that I have is I'm taking into consideration any future development of Wampatec Street in the years to come, and now we have a septic system that is going to cause further hardship to a owner. If any sidewalks or widening was done on Wampatec Street, there's no other an engineer is advising us there's no other place or thing to do. I think the only thing would be a tight tank, and we do not want to cause any type of a tight tank situation to a homeowner. While these footages are really off, we are dealing with a small lot. Um, I mean, Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I too, although my two children are both engineers, I, I have very little engineering background. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not the expert either. The variance is two, three, and four. I mean, since I've been yeah. on the board, we've used the term, mac well, we've heard it from our health agent, maximum feasible compliance, which is what you've apparently done. The numbers, do, the variances on two, three, and four feel very close to me. and. Um, the homeowner does deserve a new septic. I'm not. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they don't. Mm -hmm. Just the numbers on the f last three variances are concerning. Yeah. Uh, as a non-engineer, I make that statement. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm. I'm not looking to deny what the homeowner is looking for. Mm -hmm. um, Even though, and I am concerned with the garage because I don't think. I don't care what. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't care. I, I take that back. I'm concerned about any traffic, any vehicles, any type of added weight that goes on this tank or any type of this field um, for a garage. Um, I, I, I'd love for them to have a garage, but you know, you can't have it all. This is, looks like a beautiful, beautiful lot of land. Dock, deck, overlooking the water. There is a paved drive there. I just think that adding this garage is the one thing that just really. What we could, you know, because the other, I'm more, 
I was more concerned about the proposed garage from a conservation standpoint. Mm -hmm. So what we could do is withdraw the setback to the garage for this evening's discussion. And then what I'm going to recommend to my client is if you do pursue the garage, let's get conservation approval and then we can backtrack to the Board of Health. Because I, I think you know, I'm hearing what you're, t you're discussing, but I, I'm more concerned about the viability of approval to conservation for the garage. Okay. So we could come back and revisit this if we get conservation approval for the garage at a later date because the, the garage is not part of the conservation. It isn't, and, it, uh, and, it's, right, and it's not part of, of you putting in a septic system when you're designing yeah, there's, there's it to sort of like, take it all. There's, yeah. there's sort of a wish list. My client's like, right. oh, I might want to do a garage someday. Mm -hmm. like, well, let's have that. And this is productive because mm -hmm. now I can report back to my client and say, you know, so that's really what a health is not. That, that's really, I mean, these numbers are, yes, they, they're, they're crazy. Um, you know, it's but possible. Yeah. there isn't, there's nowhere else. You can't go towards the water. If we go towards a main, a main road, then we've approved it. And then what happens if something goes on with retarring or widening or sidewalks? You know, now we put them in harm's way. Um, that's just my. So my motion um, is to take out anything to do with the proposed garage. Um, and Except the other three variances as written. I don't think there's. We have to amend number one because the, the variance from, right. from 20 down to 16 for the existing 20 down dwelling, to six dwelling still exists. Correct. So it's a four foot variant, a number one of four foot variance as opposed to a <coughs> 10 foot variance. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't think there can be anything else, you know, licensed civil engineer, I mean, not civil engineer, but septic engineer design is telling Actually, us, yes. okay, you civil engineer, I want to He's make all sure. all of the above. All of the above. I mean, that's and what obviously, you can go, again, it's a three bedroom, mm -hmm. it's a three bedroom house with a three bedroom septic system. Um, you know, the only way to take that out is put a tight tank and I don't, I don't want to go there. So is there a motion on the table? There is a motion on the table. Can I am amend your motion that we include the uh, Collins Engineering that includes a liner? And I'll make well, I was, oops, I'm, I'm amending your motion. You're amending okay. my motion. Okay, so what we first want to do is we want to take a motion on the liner. Right, Lisa? Actually, no, your motion can stand, Madam Chair, and, and, and Mr. Fine's motion is correct. He'd like to amend it to include a liner um, between the home and the tank. I, I'm assuming that's what you wanted, Mr. Fine. I apologize. Does, does it say liner provided? That's correct. Yeah, no, liner is not provided. Liner provided. It says it right here. Isn't that's around the system. septic system. It was not around the tank. I don't have the full set of in front of me, though. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. Fine. You did no, want a liner between the tank, that two-foot yep. distance between the house, and if you want that line as well. Yep. Well. I will, um, do, and I, do I hear a second? I'm going to second the motion. Okay. So all in favor? I'm going to abstain. Aye. Aye. And Gail has abstained. Is that the whole thing or for number one? That's for number she, one she taking number one. into the dwelling, the 16 feet, and then we are requesting that a liner be put. Sheila, I can go over be all the doing yeah. the minutes and help you around the I have all the notes. I'll submit a revised plan. Well, second one. If you Thank could. you, Mr. Collins, we appreciate it. Um, Thank you for coming. No, we didn't do anything. Thank you very much. Now, I, in my mind, I was trying to think about 51 atoms. I don't, no, like, I don't, with the numbers this drastic. No, the yes, liner, are, no, we are it requesting really? also. Let me put it to you this way. Revised the plan. installer installing the, it, I was on um, site. Septic, and at one point, um, had the stopping shore up so that the house didn't fall in. Requires a liner. The house. And, the and house. Um, George is going to... Um, you must have come in in a shirt and tie that night if we gave you those variances. No, no that's no. his uniform. <laughs> uh, he's gonna, you're going to do up a revised plan? Yes, I'll revise the plan. I'll amend the, the variance. Amend the first variance and then add the liner to variance number two, with sure. the two-foot um, reduction at the liner between the uh, home and, and the tank. And then I'll take the garage, the ghosted in garage, right off the plan. Thank so. you. You folks have a good night. Thank you for your help. Um, no, I always.
Uh, will I see you again? No, you're not even on the big board. What happened? You're not even on the big board. We should ask that. No, seriously, you, you're here all the time, and now you're gone. Dumb, so I guess it's it's a, you get, get, we don't have any more business cards. I think that's the problem. Um, yeah, we got Bruce to complain next. <sighs> Why, Caitlin? We were just going to do an update. I want an update from Lisa and from, um, there's going to be an update from Lisa and from Sheila because Kaylin went on vacation. Hi, Kaylin. Hi. Kaylin, um, Gail McSweeney, I don't believe Hi. she was here at our last meeting. Um, we basically have this on just because we wanted to see an update. Um, I know you were on vacation. Lisa was away on vacation, mm -hmm. so I think a lot of it's falling to you because you were here in the office. Is there any, um, uh, well, so in regards so to- She's on vacation also. Okay. Um, but she did call before she went and uh, said that, the, that you were doing something out there, mm -hmm. but um, she didn't notice the difference. No, and she what did say, hours she, she did say that, you know, she had company over and the roses were growing and I said okay. but it's for the day and there's you know, plenty of like that. So, mm -hmm. so we're a little concerned about the Did she have any complaint about the evening guests with John? Uh, at the time she said she could still hear them. I said it will, you know, take a um put if you can get your phone and do the date take time stamp on it mm -hmm. and uh and record it. Okay. But um uh, I gave you my email address but uh, I don't know if whatever she recorded, but you know, sometimes that gets too large to email. Okay. Some stuff is, is limited at like two megabytes. And it's very easy to go over that. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a current stars. Okay. You know, I completely sure. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't hear everything you said, but uh, you don't have to repeat it. But when did you, I didn't hear when you last spoke to? I want to say it was. Uh, it was after I was back. They called, so it had to be after the second. Maybe so it was it the third or the fourth. It was between the two. It was okay, between, so it was between whatever first vacation. It was less than a week ago. Yes. Yes. That is correct. Okay. And it probably was when you were on vacation. Yes. Okay. And Lisa had given you some ideas. Mm -hmm. Reached out to some people. Mm -hmm. um, when you left the meeting, you had I think a week's a packed week before you went on vacation. Right. Um, can you advise the board as to anything that you were able to accomplish? I've Any progress? Solved. What's going on? Yeah. I have, which the day she had people over, they were shooting on the back deck again, so therefore okay. it makes the animals quiet. Okay. So we're so going to leave that up to the police department. Okay. okay. Um, so I did install boxes in all of the coops. Um, it's still kind of a work in progress because I have to get the height right because if a crow, rooster cannot stand up, a rooster cannot grow. So therefore, I just have to keep working on the height with everybody. Height body. you're trying to set it? Yeah. Right. So I've already done it a few times because I can't, like, I know even in the livestock it says they have to be properly, ad um, adequately ventilated. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're telling me to close them in a box, yet then they can turn around and say, oh, well, now you're suffocating them. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's like, it's definitely going to be a process. So, and I'm, I think it's funny that she can hear them overnight because they have air conditioners in every single window. So none of their windows open at this point. So it's amusing that she still hears them. Okay. Um, but I know the insulation. I haven't done that yet because that costs money. Okay. It costs a lot of money. I have probably 10 coops that all have to be done. Um, however, I've noticed that just putting them in the box because at first I put in a door, but then, so now they're in a box with another door. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed with that, the sound has at least three quarters of the way gone to the point where I'm curious so I can even hear them. I have to physically go out of my deck to hear them. Mm -hmm. I can't even hear them in my house. Okay. So Is that day or night? Or anytime. Okay. okay. Um, in the day they are out. Right, because so. they can come out right. at seven in the morning. Yes. Um, there was one building that you were looking into seeing if you could transport it mm -hmm. across the yard to the other side of the fence. Yeah, I talked to um, Dan Smith, 
Mm -hmm. But the issue with that, we actually measured it. It's actually further away. It's weird. It's further away from their house now than if I were to move to the other side of the yard because the barn is tucked in that corner. So it would be in front of the barn and then the front door would actually be facing their house. So it didn't make sense. That just made it how it would be on the way there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm like freezing in here. It's okay. Yeah. That's why we wear sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me start sharing it. Um, okay. By, by moving it, and I don't have the, the map, the plot plan in front of me right now. No, and I think I might still. Where the, the particular poop in question is mm -hmm. now. Is it is it facing their no, bedroom? It's facing is it is it my yard. It's turned like probably at a thirty mm, forty five degree angle. It's a it's a forty five degree facing angle facing into, into my the property. back lot line and so, side lot line facing in cat corner. If you move it to the other side, I know what she's saying. She has a larger barn there, so it would actually come closer to her house, but in coming closer to her house it actually would probably be in as the crow flies distance actually closer to her butter's house. Did we not see that the last time we were discussing that? It seemed when I was looking at. Actually, our property is a kind of weird angle. So this is this was the coop in question. Yes, yeah. that was the coop in question. Correct. So I okay. have a large barn that takes up pretty much those two spots here. Yeah. So therefore, it would move it up here, Which but it would be. face it towards their house. Oh yeah. No it, it would face it towards their house. It, oh, would, yeah. it wouldn't be further away. No, it would it's by bringing, bringing it up forward, it's bringing 30, 40 feet would actually bring it closer. closer. If it's not the same, same but it would face versus you know, right the same. No. I'm surprised that we didn't see that the last time. Well, I, I see how this is Caitlin Drew Circles. Yeah. I don't know if we understood that this was a large building you know, a, a, a barn. It looks like two separate entities. Yeah, one is, well, what the small corner, circle in the corner, that's the barn, and it has two kennels on either side. It has two kennels. And then there's the third kennel in the front, that's for geese. Menagerie. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're seeing a remark difference. I think it's just I know the sound has to be like a hundred feet. Yeah. I know if you're staying within hundred feet, it's the tiniest muffle. So the fact that she's saying it's still waking her up when she has air conditioners running in every single window. Well she's saying she can still hear them. I don't know Well she's fighting she because her problem sleeping. isn't the overnight. She doesn't want the noise during the day. Right. And there's nothing that can be done about right. that. Right. But that's what I'm saying. She's not hearing them at night. She's complaining that she's hearing them during the day, and she's not going to give up this fight until I get rid of them because that's the only way she can enjoy her yard in the daytime. Sheila, does that validate what your conversation? And again, I might have missed part of it. She did say she could hear them in the morning and during the day, and I told her there's nothing we can do about that. It's legal. She said, "Well, I hear, you know I haven't hearing them at night," and I said, "Well, you know, let's take a video or a camera, or, you know, a video because you need you need to hear the audio." You know, because it's, right. it's dark, you're not going to so with her video last week when she was playing it, it was loud. It's only that loud if you're actually standing in the pen with all of them. I don't well, know. Like, I, I don't know she's about, I don't know if I got her, but like, you know, so night 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 she's going to like have them tested. Right. And her and thing isn't fair. Right. And I think a lot of this is, is, is dealing with personalities and mm -hmm. I think that people are extremely I was under the impression we were friends until Irritate, a month yeah. ago yeah. so I um, had no idea she was going to I think Ru right. Roos is content to do that right. even, even the best of people but um, you know again there is a, a, an ordinance mm -hmm. you are working on it they are in uh, boxes you said yeah. okay concerned about ventilation um, you know how um, I should know this. No, they up in attics. They no, put the use, little fans. You can use attic vents and 
stuff Attic like vents. that. Any of those types of things. Yeah. yeah. Even if yeah. you had a, a, one of those little blowers. You don't even need a blower. Just a, the vent itself is enough. You don't the have to have an access vent. It's cool enough. A passive she vent is no just fine. The, right. the person on 98, the other side of the vent. No, she loves them. She yeah, actually they, thought I got rid of them. She says she can't even hear them even during the day. Yeah, she. Um, same thing with Ozzy. I had signatures from every single other neighbor. Oh, you're right next to Scott. Yes. Okay. So him and his mom signed. They have no problem. They don't hear them ever. Okay. Same thing with Mike and Sally. They signed. But they're across the street. But our house is like right across from each other. So it's like yeah, I mean right, right, but, right but, past but, my house. Right. Right. But I'm, then what, I'm, what I'm problem. saying is, it, if she's got everything set up right here, it, there's no problem with number 98. Right. This is the one that she's having the problem with. So, mm -hmm. I mean, both people should hear the same frequency, especially where well, the location is, where the, right, the roost well, is at. Yeah, they're, they're right over here. So they're right on her property line. But there's line. trees and bushes on that yeah, side. Yeah, right. But the it, other side's actually more open. So there's right no now, trees going to the other side. So the noise would be just louder over there because they don't have the to me it's going to be the same kind of if you're in the middle it's going to be the same right. on the on both sides okay well, regarding okay. the insulation it talked about 10 coops mm -hmm. so what i heard from you tonight and i don't want to put words in your mouth you said insulating the 10 coops would be expensive mm -hmm. i get that i'm asking you specifically what are your plans if any what are your plans, if any, to insulate any of the coops? I necessarily not might not go with that because they, number one, it's toxic. So all my goats need to do is whip, rip one shingle off, and they all have access to it, and then my whole flock's dead. Well, I, so I can't. Well, don't say you, I'm, but don't say you can't. But I want to bring you and help me on this mm -hmm. one, Lisa. Mm -hmm. In terms of the tox toxicity, can you speak to that, or there's a solution? You. I know lots of people who've done it. That's all I can say. I sell it. It's toxic. I right, actually but, but a lot of people it. have done it. The insulation. You do know people that have insulated their coops. No, but I also have goats that like to rip up shingles. But it's and on they the can access it. So. But it's on the inside. It's the shingles are on the outside, mm -hmm. and then the insulation's on the inside. And unless they double wall it, which and that's you know. But it's then $40 there's a, sheet. a sheet of Luan at forty dollars a sheet. Luan is forty dollars a sheet. The stuff that we have is, I want to say, eighteen dollars. A quarter inch at a rock. That's plywood. It's one, which is plywood. I okay. Okay. It blows. Or no. Samson. Okay. Samson. I know. I, I know she said Samson. I mean, but that's the other guy. Always think of change stores. So, in, in terms of an update, thank you for coming before the board. This evening, you, you weren't. I don't believe that you were required to be here. Um, I believe we asked her last time to come. Well, it's important to me. Like. So I'm hearing your plans are to do nothing with the insulation at this moment. No, I'm going to add additional siding, like shingles, because they're not toxic. So I can add additional siding, which basically it's just going to muffle the noise further. And then once I get the measurements right, and make them tight enough, but enough that they can freely move, they won't be able to grow. So, but you're not going to do anything on the insulation on the inside? No, because it's toxic. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't have roosters. I'm only hearing what my health agent right. is saying, that other people have done it. So if it were toxic, other people have done it. So you're not going to do anything with the inside insulation? No. I think so. It's toxic. So Could I, I, I interject here houses. just for a second? I think that the clarity here is you're dealing with more than the one animal. The, it, it's not toxic to her, her roosters. It's toxic. It to, is. It's toxic to all of them. It's toxic to, yeah. to, the, to, it's, to the roosters. Yeah, it would be toxic to people. You can't go and eat it. Well, the roosters well, really... They pack. Yeah, they're going to pack. And the goats are going to sit there and shave their teeth on it. They're going to eat a good amount. So they're going to eat the wood shingles on the outside of the house? The but goats. that's harder. It's not like foam. Right, so but they, they, can't get, they can't get to the insulation if it's on the inside of the coop. On the inside. But also some of the coops are this big. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to get a sheet inside? Like it's just not doable. 
that's why I have to work from the outside. Like getting the boxes in was hard enough. That literally took me like the entire week to get, I think, seven boxes in. Mm -hmm. And that was with help. I had friends come over and actually help them. Mm -hmm. So it's like trying to get into these little doors. The doors that I'm working with are like this bit. Mm -hmm. Like I actually pulled the roof off a couple of them. Or I tried to pull the roof off. I knew one it from the roofs. inside. I tried, but one of the roofs was rotted. So I and do they, have, do they have air vents on the side? They have okay. circles with mesh. Okay, so they, they have plenty of air mm -hmm. to breathe fine. Mm -hmm. So they're But okay. you also have to watch for temperature and dander. They get respiratory infections. There's a lot to it. They're animals. Like yeah, you they can't have to dog, dog and, yeah, and dog. walk it in a car yeah. because the neighbor doesn't like his barking. You will go to jail for that. No, you put them in you put them in their, their, the their you put them in their house. You They're know, in their house, but they're getting into a very confined spot at this point. Right, but they live in boxes. They're they're roosters. No, they live in my yard. Well, they're not, but they can't live outside. They have to. The house that they live in <coughs> has to be okay. That the house that they live in at night time mm -hmm. needs to conform to them being able to be in that house right. from dust till dawn. Right. Okay. You're obviously continuing to work on it. I think as a board, we would like you to continue to work on it. Um, you know, our health agent has given, given uh, her opinion of what other people have done to be able to keep mm -hmm. their pets or their and or roosters. You know, we've had one person that has done it, mm -hmm. done anything that has to be done because mm -hmm. they didn't want to mm -hmm. be in violation and lose their rights. Okay? So, this board, you're working on it, but if we get any further complaints... But if they're lies. Like I told you, she has air conditioners in her windows. Anyone with air conditioners in their windows knows you can't hear anything from outside especially not a rooster that is now muffled in a box, a quarter of the sound is now, they can still hear it with now their air conditioners in, and the rooster's making hardly any noise, which they don't like to crow now. They're having a hard time. They're fighting to crow, so all they can get out is this little teeny muffled crow. It's the most pathetic thing you've ever heard, but they don't even crow nearly as much because they can't even get it out. But yet, she's still saying it's, it's worse. It's, I can still she hear it. She didn't say it was okay. worse. Well, she, she didn't say it was worse. Still hear it. Yeah, she and that's said, but, she, but she made a statement. We, Sheila confirmed it. She made a statement. Mm -hmm. She had a party. It was during the day, mm -hmm. and they were crowing. Right. She was informed. We have no. But she keeps bringing it up, which means she's not she, listening. She would. No, but the other thing too is with the air conditioners. I have window air conditioners, and and I haven't had mine on for three days because it's not hot. I open the other windows, and I get the natural. Night air. She has air conditioners in all of her windows. She can't open any windows. Again. Okay. Let's. Like she has the same layout, so it's one window per bedroom. Right. And they and all I have an air conditioner. Yeah. I want you to. I think it would be advisable of this board to ask you to continue mm -hmm. to keep working on it. There is a bylaw mm -hmm. that we have to respect and follow the guidelines mm -hmm. so keep doing the best you can until we get other any further feedback mm -hmm. you know we'll keep you apprised okay now is there any way she has to basically prove the noise I want like testing of the dust bowls or whatever they have to do to prove that I am in accordance like at this point I'm already in accordance I've already muffled the sound can't be heard at 100 feet. So I think if she wants to pursue this any further, she needs to actually have it tested, have an acoustical engineer out there, and she has to prove it. Because at this point, she's wasting everyone's time. Lisa, can you speak to that in terms of, you know, I know that, I don't want to bring up the topic of the right to farm, but she can have her roosters making yes. noise during the day. We yes. get that. We've established that, and that's yes. not the issue here. Um, in terms of them not making noise in the evening, what have you done 
to validate or hear the roosters crow in the evening. Which I don't imagine you getting up at. No, four. but I can. But it would involve me being either on Caitlin or her butter's property after 7 p.m. at night or before 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So is there any? So there's. I can do that. But there's. You're saying up to now there's been no precedent for you as the health agent to. We have resolved all issues before they came to this point in the past. Okay. We have never gotten to this point with the case. And we had a situation a couple of years back. Yes. One rooster. One rooster. Um, and we, the owner, chose to rehome that rooster. Well, as the board knows, in almost every case, with the exception of the two that did the insulated coops, everyone has chosen to eliminate or rehome their rooster. No one has has been very set on keeping a rooster. Mm -hmm. There are some communities around us that outlaw roosters altogether. So keep working on it, mm -hmm. and you now that well, Lisa's going on vacation, so reach out to Sheila or myself, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Sheila, you're going to continue talking to the repute, re no, no, I think her vacation was. Yeah, and they're away on vacation now mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. um, with their house being taken care of. Um, so let's just put it on the agenda and we we'll continue to, to watch it. On the 21st? If I might add something. Certainly. Caitlin, you know, the last time you came here, and it was quite a lengthy meeting, I know Ms. McSmooth wasn't here, but it was, right, it was quite a lengthy meeting, and I recall one of the statements that I made was, I wouldn't want to live next to you, but I support your right to have all the animals you have, and I hope you get to keep them, and I hope you do what you're doing. I guess I would ask you, I mean, you're, you came here voluntarily, no one forced you to come here, but I, I'd like you to be a little, uh, just watch some of your your body language and what you're saying about your neighbor, that she's lying, and I mean, I'm neighbor, freezing, that's why I'm saying, like, you know, I mean, so like maybe, this is like, I'm literally, I understand, but you know, we, we want to move forward and resolve this, and we're not going to be able to settle the disputes the among point. the neighbors, but I just think, you know, I just like to see you be a little kinder and gentler in regards to the accusations that you're making about the neighbors. That's that's all. I'm just putting it out you know, there. No, I'm just defensive. I understand. Until yeah. a month ago, they were my friends. I we never had these conversations. We would talk over the fence a couple mm -hmm. times a week. We would text to make sure the other one's kids were behaving. We would just. So okay. this is all a surprise to me. So I'm going to be defensive. And and something happened along the way. That was a song. Um, where is this song? Um, something happened that, you know, push came to sh I, I don't know what happened. And, and our job is not to, you know, we can't, we cannot police that. Mm -hmm. We can only police the, the, the law that is in the bylaw for livestock, right. i.e. roosters. So, um, with that being said, unless anybody has anything further to add, I think um, we've got one more big issue that we have to deal with before we end our night. Um, I just want to sure. very quickly. I'm not an active social media person. I'm asking you, have you have you refrained from social media posting? I went on my home today page to get basically other ideas of how to quiet them down for a second. But in terms of no, I blocked them. I blocked them. Um, they already like posted so much stuff, and he was saying we were going to be friends. But then he turned around and he kept posting stuff, so I just blocked him. So but now you I have don't been staying off saying. social media in terms of throwing bars. I to never your do stuff like that. Okay. I mean, you see, my my posts are about puppies and dogs and my animals, so I don't post ugly stuff. It's not worth my time. Okay. Okay. So what was the date we have to? Um, August 21st. Yep. Is that two weeks? Yep. Two weeks from tonight. And if you want to call and see if, you know, give an update mm -hmm. um, or find out if we've had any any um, conversation with the neighbor, please feel free. And, you know, you don't have to come out. Um, okay. All right. Keep working at it. Okay. Okay. Have a good night, Kate. All right. Take care.
Okay, Lisa, let's jump right to Oldham Pond that had to be closed on Friday. So, um, she will know I was out on the perk test when I got back to the office. that Oldham Pond had exceeded for cyanobacteria. This, of course, surprised me because I had no idea that anyone was doing any testing at Oldham Pond for cyanobacteria. And I said, well, what were the counts and everything else? And I was told that the counts were quite high, well over the, the state accepted threshold. Um, the call came in from the Department of Public Health, and I asked, um, why weren't we notified what was, what was going on? And he said, yeah, well, we don't usually do stuff like this. And what I was told is some employee of the state, uh, Division of Environmental Protection, that is in the area, um, I guess got a call from somebody and went down or was going by, the way it was presented to me, was going by Town Landing on Wampatuck Street and saw something that didn't look good and decided to take a sample and send it in, I was told, to the state lab. And on Friday, or late Thursday afternoon, I guess the De Department of Public Health Division of Beaches had received the information that Oldham Pond exceeded for cyanobacteria. I said, who did the testing? When? What was the protocol? Was there a chain of custody? When did you know the results, et cetera, et cetera? Um, unfortunately, those questions remain unanswered. I was first told that the sample was taken on Wednesday morning. And then in a follow-up call, I was told the sample was taken Monday morning. Um, to date, I still have no idea who the person was that took the sample, um, and I have not seen a report of the actual analysis of the water, and I have not seen any chain of custody regarding the handling of the sample. So I'm unclear on all the details. I asked the state how we needed to proceed. Uh, Mike Betty at the state who works for DPH told me we need to follow, if we're going to follow the state protocol, we need to immediately close Oldham Pond, which we did, and that if we complied with state protocol, we would receive assistance from the state. Um, and so at that point, I could not spend more time and resources talking to the state. I needed to get out. I needed to get, obviously, different divisions of the town mobilized. I needed to get a hold of Camp Pembroke. I needed to get a hold of the um, recreation at Town Landing, get those all closed. I had to get a member of DPW to go down and lock down the the, um, the pond gate. I had to get the other gates locked and signage up um, to get the pond effectively closed. I had to connect with Chief Wall to send out um, a voicemail blast, and I had to connect with Deb Wall to send out our social media saturation of information to let the public know Oldham was closed. That took the remainder of that day. I followed up again with the state briefly today. Unfortunately, Mike Betty was out in the field, so couldn't talk really. But he did confirm back with me, as we had discussed on Friday, since the first sample taken by the DEP was on Monday. And when I talked to him on Friday, he had said this, and I confirmed with him today that, that yes, someone was going to go out and take a sample today. And he confirmed, hi, Lisa, yes, I'm in the field. But DEP has confirmed they're collecting a sample today. So supposedly someone from DEP, I still don't know who, um, went out to take a sample from Town Landing today. Um, that is the last communication. I'm hoping to, to have more communication with the state regarding this. Do we have any potential danger from Oldham um, going into the that other That culvert is shut down with the road construction. Thank you. <laughs> it has been shut down before this incident. So. Okay. That, that was Could one of my main concerns. Could there be any type of a... I mean, it all sounds extremely suspicious. Um, is there any possibility that there could have been some hacking going on? I have no idea. I cannot answer any of those hacking questions. In such hacking in regards to... Um, I have no idea when this sample was collected. I have no idea who e collected uh, email, it. Email, I don't somebody know. Somebody arbitrarily sending out a letter. I, I cannot we, say we what, have no what, specifics. We, we have no know. specifics of why Who, the state came when, in to te test. Why? How? For example, for example, years ago, and, and Gail, you might remember when we when we actually had a problem with blue green algae. Vanessa, I want to say her name was, and forgive me if I'm, I'm remembering correctly, actually ran the state blue green algae program. We would receive emails. We would receive correspondence. She'd say when her teams were going to be in the field, where they were going to be, when they were going to test. More than enough. 
Well, uh, we, we would get that copies of the test. We would know who, who's going to be there. We would know when their next testing date. We would receive a whole report saying, you know, with, with treatment recommendations. Now, Mike has assured me that, you know, because we're following state protocol, that, that he's going to make all the same experts and all the same people available to us if we want to discuss it with our water treatment program. Um, it was surprising to me as I talked to Mike on the phone, though, he wasn't even aware we had treated the pond this year with a lump like we have in years past. He seemed to be unaware of that. He seemed to be unaware that we were already monitoring for this, um, which kind of surprised me. So there, there's some sort of disconnect and I cannot explain where that disconnect came from. I don't even know if it's suspicious. It's just certainly it's atypical. It's, it, this is unlike any other interaction I've ever, ever had with the state. I've never had a state employee come out and do anything in this town and not notify this office. All the way down to 21E, there's a very nice gentleman from emergency response. His name was also, in, consequently, Mike. But he's since moved on. But even when he was called out to this town on a potential soil contamination oil release, he would call this office out of courtesy and say, I'm going to XYZ site. Do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Anytime anyone has come to this town, and I confirmed Mr. Clark earlier, it's been the same for him on the wetland side. Anytime someone has come out from the state for any kind of, of activity, they've always notified us. So to date, the only contact I've had is with the public beach program from DPH. I have no idea who from DEP is involved, what division, what brought them here. I, I have absolutely no information to offer on that. And you have not seen the test results that were no. originally done no. a week ago? Or They're supposedly, supposedly done I was told it was done at the state lab. I have yet to see a copy of that report. Where did those figures, who, who I mean. Mike Betty gave me the figures over the phone. And where did he get them from? He said from the state lab. So he should have a copy of the I do not report. know. I cannot answer that. And again, he wasn't, I want to be clear, he was not, he did answer me today, but he was not in the office today. Really? So I do not know what, if anything, he has sitting on his desk that he could possibly convey. My intention was tomorrow, when he is in the office, to send an email requesting that if, if he could fill in some of these details, that we would be most that appreciative. That would be wonderful. Yeah. The who, what, where, when, why, a physical copy of the report, some sort of a chain of custody, those types of things, so that the, the town, as I said to him when he first asked me to close down the beaches, I, I said, with all due respect, I said, I feel a little bit like I'm being told to yell fire in a crowded theater. And I said, you're asking me to go to a, basically an emergency protocol on your say-so. And I said, this is, this is feeling very uncomfortable to me. You know, but I did sit down with the town administrator um, and, and talk about this. And of course, the last thing you want to do is risk anyone's public health. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what we want to do. The state has a report in their hand that says we have an exceedance. They have notified us of the exceedance. It's, it's the responsibility of the town of Pembroke to respond to that. I do find it somewhat interesting, though. For example, the last time we had blue green algae, we had about double the accepted limits. And we had a couple of pets were, that were sick, and we had a couple of children with rashes. Nothing more serious than that, thank God, but we did have those instances four years ago. Amy Hill, who runs our town landing program, swim program, has been in the water every day since just after July 4th with children every day. She and I agree that the water at town landing looks cleaner than it has in five years, and she has had no reports of any illness, rashes, or anything else with, with either her staff that, are, again, are in the water every day or the children visiting in the swim program. Well, I guess bottom line right now is we just need to find out where this is we need this, this, we need where this is originated yeah. from um, and hopefully the Mass Board of Health it will be able to give you the information and Either fill in the, the blanks. the DEP or the DPH. I'm not yeah. sure who is going to provide that information but um, I do know the town administrator reached out to town council today and they said we, we should be furnished with that information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now as we sit the Oldham Pond is closed. Is closed until further, until notice. further notice, and we, we don't know how long that will be. Well, well they, they're, they're going, going to do, do the test. Time. Yeah, just, just go over the, the timeline. Time if they're going to do the testing once a week, right? right? The first, the first failed test would have been on Monday, the thirty-first. Yeah, that's what I was told that was taken. Mm -hmm. Because it had been a week, I requested that they test again at their earliest possible availability, which would have been you're only allowed to test once a week. So they would have tested today the 7th. Right. Presuming that this test comes back okay and not with an exceedance, the next possible test would be August the 14th. Mm -hmm. 
it takes a minimum of two days to process this test. Now, this, this test on this Monday only came in on Friday. I don't know why, but I know from Vanessa, 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 um, that it, it, it's a minimum of two days, so the earliest possible that we could know something definitive to open the pond again would be the 17th, provided that both those of those tests came things. back clean. Right. And if either one didn't, we're back to a zero count and we have to start. Exactly. I do know that the town administrator has already reached out to our um, water treatment group, um, the aquatic program, to talk about retreating, spot treating, um, to go over the treatment that was done, was it extensive enough, and, and to see if there's there's something else that should happen. Does this reach Oldham Pond into Hanson? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, was Hanson advised to of the situation? I would have to assume the state did. That's not our responsibility. That would be the state's responsibility. That would be on the owners of the state. That they took they had the report. They're the one that contacted me, I have to presume. And we now, don't know where those samples, where, at what points, where along the waterway those were taken? We, I was told it was taken, quote, at the boat ramp on Wampatuck Street. Town Landing has a boat ramp, so I presume that person went something, to the boat ramp. Doesn't something sound funny? I don't know. I can't answer any of these questions without any more information. And that's why I've been very careful, and, and I would advise the board the same thing. We're actively pursuing all possibilities. We are actively seeking more information. We are even now even considering treating the pond again with the information in front of us, but I, I think it's, it's very obvious to the board as it is to me there's an awful lot of information that, that, that so still there's needs to be missing. Yeah. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of missing, missing pieces. pieces. A lot of missing pieces. Okay. All right. Um, unless we would like to discuss anything no, further. No, ma'am. <laughs> I would like to no, entertain a motion from someone in regards to adjourning the meeting. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is 8.36. Next scheduled meeting is for Monday, August 21st. Oh, my. Oh, my.